We are here today with the instructor Mim from the work hunting department and our own prefect, Blue Capucian. Um, we are going to be discussing um, interviewing Sora Mim's um, um, her, her role in the work hunting department as well as how work cutting and the homesteading club um, kind of overlap their uh, functions as well as their goals. And so uh, again, without further ado, I will go ahead and turn it over to Prefect Blue Confucian and let her get on with her interview. Excellent. Thank you, Mer Vice Captain Mercuadal very much and for your assistance in having this interview happen. Welcome instructor Sora Mim. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad. And welcome to Gray School. I'm looking forward to taking classes with you. Yay, I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> I don't think, um, have you taken one of mine yet? I'm not sure. I don't not think yet, so. not yet. I am looking forward to branching out. I am finishing up some core classes and then I will be spending some time with all of our departments. Hey, <laughs> I, I know I've got to get those prereqs out of the way first, but we're excited to have you. Yes, indeed. Um, I am also president of the homesteading club that we just started, which is yeah. for gardening, it's, it's a big focus on gardening right now because it's coming up into spring. So that's all anybody can talk about. And it's also going to be involved, you know, preserving the food that you grow and anything that might happen at a homestead. And with you being our, one of our wonderful instructors for wart cunning, I was like, oh, spring, we need a wart cunning interview. <laughs> Hey, well, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Excellent. Um, we have some questions where we just get to know um, you and your department. And then I have a question that will, I want to end with a question that pertains specifically to the um, spring equinox, winter I'm so confused today. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's start with some department information. Um, in your own words, what is the focus of your department as it pertains to wizardry? Uh, well, to me, the focus of sports hunting is really about uh, utilizing the natural plant spirits and allies that we have around us. Um, not only for magical means, but also for medicinal and um, mystical purposes as well. Uh, my perspective tends to be a little bit different than uh, some other herbalists, although I do have a master's in herbal medicine, and uh, I am clinically trained, and I do still run a private clinic myself. Um, my, my personal work when it comes to work setting is really much more geared toward uh, treating plants as people. And to me, they are very much uh, an ally of mine and, and people that I go to. Uh, when I need support or when I need guidance or even just a little bit of magical help or something. Um, so to me, that's really kind of what it is. Uh, within the context of grade school, I think that our department really encompasses so many other different components within, within magical work um, and what it means to be a wizard even. So when I think about uh, work coming as a department, um, I think about all the different things that I do with herbs themselves. Uh, divination with TV readings, for example, or even just um, there's other forms of divination that people have done. Uh, you know, he loves me, he loves me not. We do that as children or wishing on dandelions. So a lot of these are kind of things that are magical, but they're not necessarily clinical or medicinal or, or laboratory kind of practical work. But it's still very much a connection with the plants and, and it is very magical in itself. So to me, in a nutshell, that's kind of what we're putting in. Excellent. Very. That makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> I also spend a lot of time with plants because I was like, you know, I, that, um, let's see. What specific topics does your department study within its concentration? I think we kind of you kind of covered that in the first one. Kind 
does. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of different parts and pieces that go into work cutting. Again, I really like the divination aspect. We don't have a whole lot of divination courses within work cutting yet. Um, that's something that I do want to develop and, and doing some Tapio Fancy uh, offerings there as well. And then also um, kind of coming into working with uh, more psychedelic and entheogenic things. Um, that's also kind of a, a specialty of mine and something that I do want to bring to the older students at Great School. Excellent. I, I, I clicked on my screen and I lost my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from your experience, what courses in your department do you think a new apprentice wizard would find most interesting? Interesting. Cool. Most interesting. That's a really tough one. I, would, I, I think for me, what I find most interesting are, are the ones that really kind of get us out into nature and meeting plants where they are. There are a bunch of different courses that do that and kind of have components of, of nature worship when you go outside and, and meet plants where they dwell rather than bringing them indoors like we tend to do a lot. Um, so I think that that's probably the most interesting component. Um, but probably the most necessary would definitely be safety and herb use. Yes, yes, I definitely, that's gonna be the second one I take, I believe is my plan. And that is required to take any of the other courses that I have. So sorry for booting people out. <laughs> I had to. Well, you know, it's it's good reason. Um, that is a very, very important class, especially with more people growing plants now and being interested in growing their own herbs and making their own teas and tinctures and such. Well, you can tell when it's me and when it's our list. It's worded very differently. <laughs> Uh, what classes are for the more experienced apprentice wizards in work? Um, well, certainly uh, the potions course, courses that I have coming up will definitely be for um, older apprentices. Um, a lot of those tend to get into some more caustic herbs and, and some things that can be a little bit more harmful. Uh, so all the potions courses within the work cutting department will be um, for level two through six. Um, and then any of the other ones that are kind of level three and above, you really kind of want to be careful with. Uh, they, they do tend to get deeper in, into the, the work cutting work and um, probably isn't really suitable for our younger students. But um, yeah, any of the, the higher levels, but definitely the social one you want to be careful with. That, that all makes very good sense. Um, do you have any new classes coming in the department that you can talk to us about yet? Not yet. I, I have some proposals in and, and some ideas, um, but I'd love to hear from the students too, uh, what other courses they would like to be offered. Uh, I, I'd be happy to develop things. And I, I have tons of ideas. I uh, would be happy to develop that for grade school specifically. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so guys, let me know if there is anything that you want to see with the more cutting. Shoot me an email. Yes, and this should be up for everyone to watch at moot and after so that message will get out to people repeatedly <laughs> are the faculty in your department collaborative or more solitary um, i definitely say collaborative there aren't many in the work cutting department um and so i work closely with katie ravensong the dean of work cutting uh, to really kind of make sure that everything's running smoothly and that we're working together with our students and uh, we just kind of making sure that we support each other. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know, actually growing our plants, especially right now, we do tend to be more solitary this year and last year. <laughs> and, and, we do. And, you know, we're with our plants that we talk to and love. It's not really solitary. <laughs> it's not, and I can get lost there for hours hours with my plants and the whole day is gone and, and I realize, oh, I need to create some papers. <laughs> Rude awakening, it's time to do work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh. <laughs> I'll weed all day long. <laughs> That's fun for me. Um, 
Let's see. Um, what can apprentices do with the wisdom they will obtain from your department? Oh, goodness. Uh, I think the great thing about work hunting is that it really can go into many different, not just magical uh, perspectives, but also very real careers. Uh, chemists and botanists and um, even modern day alchemists can definitely use a lot of what goes into the work hunting department and some of our courses. Uh, if you're looking to be a home herbalist or if you want to make your own products, definitely look into the work hunting department. Take some of our classes. Uh, you can learn how to properly prepare herbs, how to uh, make products with them, uh, different processes and, and methodologies of how to properly prepare different herbs and their types, um, different formulation methods. There's a lot of that too. There's also special uh, courses as well, a little bit more laboratory work. So uh, when it comes to anything that you learn within the work hunting department, I think that it's definitely uh, conducive to increasing your skills in other magical areas as well. Again, kind of that connection between uh, plant spirit ally and, and self, our, our self spirit, um, getting deeper into connection with, with other beings, plant beings, which we don't usually think about as, as another type of person or another type of entity. You know, we have a lot of animal worship or, or um, animal seeking and things like that. People look to animal totems for a lot of a lot of wisdom, but we kind of forget the plants, or we, we treat them just as things to be used uh, rather than things to work with or people to meet and even just to help them out where we can. Okay, off on another tangent. <laughs> Are there any professional, scholarly, occult, or mundane organizations that apprentices can join to further their knowledge and networking opportunities in this field of study? Absolutely. Um, so the American Herbalist Guild is definitely one that you want to go to. I have that cat. <laughs> They're going a little crazy back there. Um, yeah, I'm so the American Herbalist Guild. I haven't been up yet. <laughs> I've got three black cats around here somewhere. But yeah, so look them up. They can be found at AmericanHerbalistGuild.com. Uh, they put on an annual symposium with herbalists from all over the world to do different uh, presentations and conferences. They offer training. Uh, continuing education for those who are in the herbal field or nutritional field. Um, you can also even petition to present at one as well. And if you're there, I will see you at conferences. Excellent. That's, that's a good one. I had not thought of that one. So now we're going to get a little more personal with our questions. <laughs> what was the turning point that clicked and you said to yourself, I want to be a part of the Gray School of Wizardry faculty? It was honestly, uh, Sean Strader, MCO, is the instructor for, he's the Dean of Alchemical Sciences, he's the Dean of Alchemy. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me that uh, Gray School was looking for some new instructors and possibly somebody for the work hunting department. So I reached out to Amiga and, and uh, decided to possibly apply and chatted with her, uh, sorry, Dean Amiga. Uh, for a while there, and then we ended up, uh, yeah, just going through the motions, and I applied, and it went well. So, here I so apparently some of these questions are more like questions for an apprentice than for faculty. Um, Put it that way. So this, this next question would apply. In, in your own words, describe what the future holds for your department. Ooh. Well, I'm still fairly new to grade school, but I'm really excited to get more students in. Uh, I know that we have a lot of things that are going on within grade school to really kind of recruit more and things are getting moving a little bit more. So I'm excited to have more students within a single class, have more collaboration and more uh, ideas bouncing off of each other and more interactive work uh, with other fellow students and possibly once COVID kind of falls down a little bit, maybe we'll have enough pockets of people in different areas to gather for, for different in-person meetings, maybe uh, plant walks and things like that, uh, or even just small retreats that I think would be wonderful. Oh, I, I know the perfect place to host one of those. We have a lovely, uh, it's uh, called Pagan Owned Land. It's a bunch of nature lovers got together and purchased a large piece of land and reclaimed it. And really? they're actually on hip, they're on hip camp and it's a beautiful place. They, Where is it? it is in Vernonia, Oregon. It's called Finnan. 
oh my goodness, how funny. Oh, I don't want to speak too soon. How are you moving to Oregon? How excited. <gasps> Yay, you're going to love it here. It's uh, a great state. Yeah, there's a really good position at uh, Mountain Rose. So. Wave to the people. Say hi. The chihuahua was whining behind me, so she came to get him. <laughs> Before he goes into it, he'll throw his head back and do like a, a basset hound howl. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And What's his name? His name is Latte, and he's 16 years old and officially toothless as of two weeks ago. He's the last oh. one left. Uh, he's, oh. our, he's our little rescue boy. <laughs> He he's ready for mommy to go sit with him on the couch. <laughs> Are you done yet? Yeah, mama. <laughs> I finished my dinner and now I'm bored. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, when we do a live interview, this is where we do um, an open forum with questions for people. And I have one that are, I had worded it better in the email I sent you. The forest is alive. Spring is throbbing in your house. You feel it? It's I can feel it waking up. Yes. <laughs> um, what are... S I, I didn't phrase it well on this. I, I did better phrasing it in the email. Um, spring equinox is coming up. And how does wart cunning and the various classes kind of relate to spring and the meanings of spring. This is where we're all starting to do things and take action to reach our goals and starting our seeds for those of us that our snow is mostly gone. <laughs> or, yes, we're just going to stick with spring. <laughs> well, I know that spring is kind of the time where we're all more aware. We can actually see the, the growth and the movement that has been happening since the fall. Um, so when it comes to plants and work cutting, I, I I do see how it can be conducive to enlivening our lives and, and really kind of bringing in enlightenment and, and uh, embracing the light as it's coming toward us in the springtime. But when it comes to work cutting, I think that it's definitely a year-round process. Um, and that death part that we just went through uh, when it comes to plants and within more cutting is just as important as, as the birth and growth of spring. But I think uh, everybody within the work cutting department or those who are interested in work cutting should, should really respect and realize uh, and really kind of get good at recognizing plants and knowing them when they're not in full growth. Um, just like with our friends, you know, when they're kind of down or at their worst or kind of not feeling good or they're hibernating themselves, that's when we really want to check on them. Same thing with our plants too. We don't want to lose touch with that aspect when we are hibernating ourselves or kind of turning inward at the darker half of the year. But since spring is here and we are all just kind of excited to get outside and get into the warmth, uh, that snow melt still does have a lot of really good uh, attributes for seeds themselves. There are a lot of different seeds. You're about to get hit by your plant. <laughs> Which one? The, the one in the hanger to your left. The whole oh, thing just shifted. <laughs> they got a good hit in. I'm just, telling you, these pads over here. It was swinging. It looked like it was about to hit your head. <laughs> Probably would. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time either. Oh, our animals. But, Speaking of spring, there's a prime example. <laughs> Plants hitting you in the head. I know. I mean, this is stinky. So much fun. Well, you know, as you mentioned, the you know, coming out of the, the dead time of year, um, without that die off of the greenery from the previous season, there wouldn't be the nutrients for the next season to come up. It, it you know, there is no waste. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with the apprentices of the Gray School of Wizardry? Um, if you are uh, venturing into starting to seed and growing your own plants, the only thing that I can recommend doing if you're new to growing is start small. 
Um, it can be so overwhelming. I, I get a little overwhelmed and get really excited when I start my seeds. So I end up planting hundreds at a time. You never know which ones are going to actually come up anyway. So it's not awful. But we end up killing over 200 of them because a cat jumps and completely just ruined the whole tray. Like that. You want to be careful with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm always really guilty about planting too many seeds and I don't want to kill any of them. And so I overload my space and then some of them wind up dying anyway. And we have outdoor, a lot of feral cats. I'm a little on the edge of the countryside. So it, it, it was interesting to watch raccoons eating the leftover zucchinis that got left too long at last fall. So I'm kind of interested to see if one comment? comes up where that was at, because I, I watched as the, the color left it as they were eating it and then ate through the middle. <laughs> yeah, you should see uh, if you leave different fruits and veggies on the ground and they start to ferment, uh, squirrels and raccoons have a really good time. <laughs> I don't watch. <laughs> oh, that, that explains why they come to the apple tree in January, February. <laughs> See. We always leave some fruit fall for the animals. Um, this February, we had a wonderful time. Um, the holly tree, you were talking about some plants are safe and some others aren't. Our holly tree is rather large. She's been there a long time. And mm -hmm. she's covered in red berries until like mid-February. And then they'll just, one day, they'll, they're gone in one day. And we've started last year and this year, we managed to catch it. We get like this giant flock of robins. I was going to say, was it robins? Yeah. And, and then we saw squirrels in the tree too. I did not realize squirrels could eat holly berries. I know humans mm -hmm. can't. <laughs> no, no part of the holly is edible by humans. You can, once you've learned enough in alchemy and herbology, there is some things you can do, but 99% of the time, no. People don't realize how poisonous so many things are. I mean, tomatoes, if they aren't right at a potatoes, there's just so many. Yes, I'm I'm looking at growing potatoes this year. I've been watching YouTube videos way too. Are you gonna do a box? I am, I'm gonna do a box. I, I have we had to redo our thirty something year old fence. So I am reusing as much of the wood as I can, and I'll be using some of that to make potato boxes. And I picked up fingerling potato starts. Yeah, but we was, had more potatoes than we knew what to do with. Dry can, pressure canning. Peel them, cut yeah. them up, put them in a jar, process them. Ta-da, awesome potatoes. Brilliant. Baked potato. There's a woman who puts whole potatoes in. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and pressure cans it, then you just take it out, warm it up, put some butter on it. Ta da! Yum! Yeah, brilliant. I can't, I, I can't wait to try it. But if the sun reaches the potato itself while it's growing, then it gets a po it's poisonous. The skin is actually poisonous. So you have to make sure you keep the soil up over the potatoes. So I've mm -hmm. gotten really where I rarely eat unpeeled potatoes because at least one spot will get peeled. So if I see any green, I go, yeah, no. Yeah, because be careful with that. <laughs> so, okay. basis, man. <laughs> so I would like to thank you for interviewing with us and tell you I love your coffee mug. Thank you. <laughs> it's very pretty. <laughs> Me and my princess. <laughs> We can appreciate them and respect them. It's when you don't know what's poisonous and you don't respect it that you have problems. Good point. <laughs> Thank you very much for chatting with us. And Carmen, thank you I'm so much again. See you more later. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Goodbye, Instructor Man. Bye. And